This is part 69 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to show or hide register, login and logout links based on whether the user is logged in or not. Along the way, we'll also discuss implementing the logout feature. If the user is not logged in, then we want to display register and login links as you can see right here. On the other hand, if the user is logged in, then we want to display logout and then the username with which he is logged in. In this case, we have logged in with username pregim at pregimtech.com. So we want to display logout pregim at pregimtech.com. And then once we click on that link, the user should be logged out. And then we should again dynamically show register and login links instead of the logout link. To check if the user is logged in, we are going to make use of this sign in manager class. Our application navigation menu is defined in the layout view. So we want to check if the user is logged in or not in the layout view. So that means we need an instance of this class in the layout view. At the moment, we are using dependency injection to inject an instance of this class into account controller. Similarly, we need to inject an instance of this class into our layout view as well. To inject a class into your view, we use at inject directive. Sign in manager class is present in Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Identity namespace as you can see from the IntelliSense. So first, let's include the required namespace. The class that we want to inject is sign in manager of identity user. Let's name the instance sign in manager with the lowercase yes. If we need this sign in manager class in other views, then we have to include this using statement in every other view where we need this class. So in order to reduce code duplication, let's move this using statement into this view imports file. Our application navigation menu is defined here using this unordered list. Notice the register link is present here. So let's use the injected sign in manager class instance to check if the user is signed in. So if sign in manager dot is signed in, this is the method that we use to check if the user is logged in or not. Notice from the IntelliSense, this method expects an instance of claims principle to be passed as a parameter. You can think of claims principle as the logged in user. To get an instance of claims principle in the razor view, we have access to user property. Notice this property is defined on razor page base class and it returns us an instance of claims principle of the current logged in user. So let's use this user property. If the user is signed in, we want to display a logout link. So let's make a copy of this li element and then change the bits that are required. Use a post request to log out the user. Logging out the user using a get request is not recommended because this approach may be abused. For example, a malicious user may trick you into clicking an image element where the source attribute of that image is set to the logout URL of your application. Now when we click on that image, we are logged out of the application without even realizing and all of a sudden we are confused. Why did the application log me out? So to avoid all that, let's use a post request to log out the user. For that, we need a form method attribute to post. Where do we want to post? To the logout action of the account controller. We do not have this logout action in our account controller yet. We'll create it in just a bit. Now to issue a post request inside this form, let's include a button element and set the type attribute to submit. For styling this button as a navigation link that looks like this, I'm going to use four bootstrap classes. Navlink btn btn link py-0. Now, if we take a look at our site.css file, notice for the btn class, we have set width to 75 pixels. But for this button, we want to override that. We want 
more width than 75 pixels otherwise the text of the button will be wrapped into two lines and that does not look good so to override the width i'm going to set inline style where width equals auto and the text on the button is log out we also need the logged in username to get the logged in username we use user dot identity dot name if the user is signed in we are displaying the logout link else along with this register link let's also display the login link for that let's make a copy of this li element and then change the bits that are required the text is login and when this link is clicked we want to go to the login action in the account controller. All that is left to do is implement this logout action within our account controller. The logout action is going to be a public async action returns task of I action result and the name of the method is logout. Remember, we want to log out the user using a POST request. So let's decorate this action method with HTTP POST. To sign in and sign out a user, we use this injected sign in manager service. So on this instance, notice we have sign out async method. This method doesn't require any parameters. It's an async method. So let's await it. After the user is signed out, let's redirect him to the index section of the home controller. Notice at the moment we are not logged in and we see register and login links as expected. When I click on this login link, we see 404 not found error. That's because at the moment within our account controller we do not have login action we'll discuss implementing login feature in our next video if you recollect from our previous videos in the series after we register a new user we log that user in so let's register a new user notice the user that we have just registered using this email abc at gmail.com is logged in and that's the reason we see this link logout abc at gmail.com instead of register and login links and the email that we have used is the username we can see that in this ASP.NET users database table let's view the data of this table notice the username column the email abc at gmail.com is the username so at this point when we click on this logout link notice we see the register and login links instead of the logout link here is the view code and on the next slide we have the logout action code that's it in this video thank you for listening